years or decades but you have an experience I, you have not experienced walking in this kind of attitude walking in this type of mindset all he's got to do is burp in your face and give me the Kleenex the devil's beating up and I'm not minimizing struggles and problems okay but I'm afraid all of us in here we just kind of lay off on our understanding of how much power is packed in that word right there that you have access to right now. You've got access to it today. Today is the day of salvation. And you can do something about it. You can. You can walk in that very same power, but you've got to put it on and you've got to know it, it, it's not Saul's solution. It's not heavy burdens that's going to get me in, but it's the power of Jesus Christ. You're not leaving this earth, folks, until he is through with you. So you might as well put your clothes on and get out here and kick the devil in the mouth so he knows that the people of God are the real deal and we're not going to sit down and just let him take over everything that has to do with us. Say amen for Bishop J. Drew Shear. Let's go. 
people. Hallelujah. 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 Behold, he comes. Behold, he comes. Hallelujah. God, we recognize you this morning. Lord, we know that you are coming soon and very soon. We're going to see the king, oh God. And oh Lord, we give you praise this morning. You said if we don't do it, the rocks will cry out. Mudslides, earthquakes, avalanches, Lord, all of that will happen. Floods. So we, we give you praise this morning, Lord. This is the day you've made. We will rejoice. Can you say amen again? Give the Lord another great big hand. Hallelujah. The whole earth is filled with His glory. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, God's been trying to move all morning long. Hallelujah, Lord, we know that. We know that. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise this morning. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? I want you to look at somebody, just while you're being, you don't have to touch them, just say, I'm already glad I came to God's house. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Can you say praise the Lord? Man. Hallelujah. The devil is an upset devil right now. Hallelujah. He's upset. This without any glory whatsoever to him. This has been from before the start the most fought against service that I can remember ever having in this church. We've had glitches and things, but I'm telling you, before church, we've had so many things. In fact, I, I really tell you to pay attention this morning. This may be the only time you hear this because it is not being streamed unless a miracle just happened. And, and, and God just pulled me off of that about uh, 35, 40, just said, stop, I didn't want it to do it. So unless it's happening right now, you need to really just, Look and listen to what God is saying today. I want, to, I want to tell you that the Lord really is wanting to move more than He's moved in this church. And, and, and whether you believe it or you even agree with it or not, you really need for the Lord to move in a great and mighty way. You don't need a blessing. You don't need a touch. You need a move of God. And this is why we have been talking about the kingdom of God because when you get into the kingdom of God, I'm not talking about heaven, you will find out quickly that every, and you will be able to see maybe for the first time in your Christian life that everything is always moving and that's why people that's in the kingdom of God, they are always moving because things move. And speaking of the kingdom of God, You've only seen him from a distance, but the newest warrior actually made it into the kingdom of God uh, service this morning, and, and I got to scoop him up because there's no way I'm not going to recognize the youngest sword-fighting gentleman, and it don't have to be a gentleman. Let, let me go see if I can find him right quick. Y'all just don't, don't. Don't get upset. You're sitting all the way back here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I ain't going to bother you. Don't worry. I ain't going to call you out. I'm not going to wake him up. The lights and all these people might wake him up. I ain't going to wake him up. Come here, buddy. Right here. Is this this is I know I do it every week, honey. This right here is what I needed in my life about right now. Just get my mind off of demons and devils and all this stuff that 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 aggravates you to death. And uh, so, as Mama told me, she's about to sleep. And that word right there is worth a four million dollars right now. Let me just let you see. I'm going to let you see Mr. Beckham right quick. He's the latest, greatest warrior in the army of the Lord. And I want you to give him a 
great multitude will. I didn't do that just to show you that, that beautiful baby. I didn't do that. I'm telling you, the Lord reminded me of something this morning that, that I need to tell you before we, we, we look at this. And that is the scriptures say that out of the mouth of babes that God has perfected praise. So when you don't want to praise the Lord, and when you're wondering why a baby's crying at 2 or 3 in the morning and all that, it might be a bottle, it could be a diaper, it could be both. Or when they're just making that coo and ah sound that Bean was talking about a while ago that just kind of melts us all over, it, it could be that they're just praising the Lord right then. So uh, he may not be able to hold or read a Bible yet or sing or, 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 or touch a knob or hand out a bulletin yet but for all we know he's already a worshiper and I give God praise for that this morning so I want to tell you speaking about warriors and about the kingdom I need you to to kind of just give yourself permission this morning to listen in a a way that you've never listened before. Because if you don't listen, you're going to leave here and you're not going to really understand what I'm talking about or what the Lord is trying to say to us. So having said that, I need for you to close your eyes and we need to ask God to help us. Because our heart is really, it's really dirt. And if the seed doesn't make it in the dirt, it's not going to grow and we're not going to grow, okay? So, Lord, I pray that what I hear and what I might see on the screen right now, that you'd be glorified. And, Lord, I also pray that, that the devil, Lord, would be defeated by my focus today in my own personal life. My focus is on your word right now because nothing else matters but your word, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would just keep us safe keep us healthy, keep us focused. We rebuke the devourer right now, and we give you all the praise, and help us not to be distracted nor distract in Jesus' name. Amen. Many Christians have the attitude in this, in this present time that we're living in, whether it be you reading the Bible or me preaching out of the Bible, uh, the Word of God has to pass through my understanding it's kind of like what's being said, it has to be approved by me and what I feel before I will receive it or let alone respond on it. And I'm going to tell you something, the longer you live, the closer we get to the return of the Lord, you're going to find that difficult. Because there was a time, I've preached about it many times, that Jesus had hard sayings and people that were following him, wholeheartedly following him, the Bible says many turned away and didn't follow him anymore because the saying was too hard. What it meant was since they maybe didn't agree with it or understand, they just kind of reduced it down to not true and they walked away. And you got to be careful of that, especially on this topic right now. Because when I talk about the kingdom of God, it, it, it's a proactive message, meaning that there is no way that I can just listen to it and not be engaged in what it's saying. After You, you can't just kind of, it can't be a good devotional to you. It can't be a novel. It can't be a, a song that you hear and it gives you good thoughts. 
it, it's got to be at that level that, Lord, I may not understand this. It may not line up with what I've been taught, but it's your word, and I receive it, and I will respond accordingly. You've got to do that. When we talk about spiritual gifts, especially, and this came up uh, Wednesday night when we had just a, a, a great corporate service. I feel like we had a great corporate service over at that school Wednesday night. And one of the things that come up is, is kind of something that was a spinoff of last Sunday morning, and that is that the kingdom of God and the armor of God are inseparable. You can't teach or talk about or preach about the armor of God and not understand the kingdom of God, but likewise, you can't talk about the, the armor of God and the kingdom of God and, and not talk about the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and ministry gifts. All of those things, talked about mostly by Paul, all of those things, and Jesus, they, they are together. It, it's an entire entity. You cannot... You can't break it apart and say this or that or I feel strong about this. You can't do it, church. I don't care how you've been raised or what you feel is correct. Remember, if you don't get rid of your head, you're not going to receive this and much more because His ways are higher than our ways. You're not going to understand it with your head, let alone receive it. it ha it's a spiritual letter, a spiritual word, and so it has to be processed and received with a spiritual heart. You, you leave here, and you will leave here like you came, not in Jesus' name. We sung a song growing up, you, will leave, you won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Well, most of the time, people leave here like they came, and not in Jesus' name. Still bound, oppressed, tormented, and it ain't gonna change. I changed the word. So you you can't you gotta get rid of your head. You can't lean to your own understanding. And I gotta make that clear before I go any farther. Especially one of the things that turns people off and, and, and tunes all of this preaching out is one gift in particular, which is the gift of the tongues. And I'm not talking about that. It's no different if you will read the Bible with an open heart. It's no different than the gift of healing, than the gift of prophecy, than the gift of miracle. It's no different than all of it. And to be honest with you, it's no different than the sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation, your, sh your feet being shod with the preparation of the God, the breastplate of righteousness. It's no different. And it's also, say this with me, no less. It's no less. You can't diminish the things of God. If you do, you diminish God in your own life. So I'm telling you this because the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. I want to say the Holy Spirit because that's the user-friendly word. And I said this about two or three years ago. But I want to say the Holy Ghost this morning because I mean the power of God manifesting himself in my life be it through a word of knowledge or be it through an unknown tongue or, or, or be it through just speaking to me and me talking to you. It doesn't matter. When I say the power of the Holy Ghost, I mean everything that goes along with that. So I don't want to be muddy or kind of I don't know what you're talking about. You're just being generic and user-friendly. Not today. And so the Holy Ghost, it, it's not a phase that you go through but rather, it's a fire that burns in you. It's not a phase. It's not a good altar call. It's not a fast song and me getting real emotional. That's not what it is, although a lot of us know that that's what we've seen growing up. And it still occurs today. I'm not saying that that's not, there's not a time and place and that doesn't happen. It does. It's happened here. And I'm sure it will happen again because the power and presence of God is going to happen here if people don't happen here. So it's not a phase at all. If it's a phase, then you don't have that gift. You don't have that experience. If it's a phase, you haven't experienced it yet. If it's a fire, you have it. Now, the last scripture with the fourth installment of the kingdom of God is this right here, Luke 16 and 16. The law and the prophets were until John. 
Let me say that again. The law and the prophets, things as they were, were until John. The law and the prophets were until John, meaning John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Okay. Since that time, meaning after John the Baptist, after John the Baptist preached and he was in the wilderness and he came out and he said, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight paths for yourself. When he was preaching Jesus Christ, the law and the prophets were until John, meaning that was the way that you walked, that was the way you worshipped, and that was the way you warfared. All right? But since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. What am I saying? What I've been saying for three or four weeks, the kingdom of God, not heaven, the kingdom of God, thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth, in earth. That's right here, right now, as it takes place in heaven. Another scripture that goes along, but you never hear them together. Whatever you bind on earth, it's bound in heaven. And and likewise reverse. If you bind it in heaven, it's bound down here. So the law and the prophets, that was the way. Walk, worship, warfare until John the Baptist, okay? Then there was a a new way, a new covenant. Since that time, the kingdom of God is now how the believer walks, worships, and wars against the devil. Before you were limited. Now you are completely unlimited. Now you can not only just... Go to the temple, but now you can go beyond the veil and you can boldly approach his throne. Now you don't have to depend on a prophet of God or a man of God like the law and the prophets. But now you can have the spirit of God himself dwelling in you and out of you and through you. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. But not really a whole lot by a whole lot of people because it is so challenging to me. It is, it is so, it is, it is so strict and, and, and regimented for a believer. And since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And check this out. Every man, every woman of God presseth. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presseth into it. A little later on, some of you are going to hear me say the word all. Some of you will. When I say the word all, I want you to remember the last part of this verse. And every man presseth into it. Remember that. When I talk to you about that word, presseth, it comes from a Greek word that means this. It means to use forth, force, to apply force. It means to force or inflict violence on. And you need to really focus on the word inflict. That means... Every man that's pressing into the kingdom, every woman that's pressing into the kingdom of God means you really understand it. You've heard about things all your life. You've spent a lot of times as a Christian, but you hadn't spent not one day pressing into the kingdom of God. And when you understand it and when you get it, you understand also that that means you don't sit back And you don't wait on the devil to do the next dirty, low-down deed to you or afflict your body. That word means you go and you press and you inflict harm and danger and warfare on his kingdom. Are we clear? Just exhale or inhale. Are you clear? You understand. I'm not moving unless I know you understand. Means the real 
serious, focused, kingdom of God, minded man, woman, boy, girl, student. They are pressing into the kingdom. Meaning they are taking the fight. They are inflicting pain back on the devil and all of his kingdom cohorts. If you are not pressing in, he's pressing in on you. And you, if you're not pressing in, you're not able to fight back. Any college theologian, seminarian, uh, student, I, seminary student, I, it doesn't matter. It's high time that the people of God realize that the power of God is still meant and intended for the people of God to operate in until the trumpet sounds. Paul said this in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I, I made reference to tongues a while ago, but he, and he made reference to tongues in this 13th chapter, but he was meaning everything. He said, there is going to come a time when that day comes, when that day, when everything's made perfect, when's it going to per- be made perfect? It's going to be made perfect when Jesus steps out on the cloud. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, and he calls you home. At that moment, when he calls you home, guess what? Tongues will cease. The armor of God will cease. Healings, miracles, all of those things will cease because that which is in part, meaning our redemption is not complete until Jehovah comes. Riding on the clouds. But when he comes, we won't need the equipment anymore. We won't need it anymore because we will be with the Holy Ghost. We will be with God the Father. We will be with Jesus Christ. You don't need it anymore. So everybody that's always said, well, Paul said tongues will cease. I want to tell people... Especially people that have gone to some kind of religious... I want to say, are you serious? It is an IQ test. Read the whole scripture. He says, when that day comes. And I don't... But see, people are not comfortable because it calls me out of the dugout onto the pitcher's mound to start hurling balls. People don't like that. Not in this day we live in where we don't even want to work for a living. I heard somebody yesterday talk about, I I I didn't want to hear this. I can make more at home, drawing a check. That's why I'm not going to work. And I'm telling you right now, I know people are disabled, and, and, and that's why me and you, we pay Social Security, and people have work, and they retire and draw Social Security. And then we got people like my nephew, who, and we got seniors, and we've got people like, this is not a political statement, this is a spiritual. So get your head out of the gutter this morning. I'm telling you, you got to quit helping the devil out in your life if you're going to walk in victory. You are not from this earth. But I, we pay all this money, Social Security and taxes, to take care of people that's either already paid their dues or can't take care of themselves. Not for a 22-year-old young and to have five children and everything free and make about two grand a month. That's not what we're called to do. That's not the society that the Lord built up. And I don't care. I know you don't know their story. They had a hard life. Let me tell you something. And they're in a modern day slavery and they don't even realize it because somebody up the street a couple of hours away has already determined how much money that you're going to make. What level of poverty you're going to live at. And let me tell you, I don't even know why I'm telling you all this this morning. I'm telling you bondage is everywhere. And what I'm really trying to say, thank you Holy Ghost, is we have been conditioned over the past at least decade or two or ten, to just sit back and be served. To sit back, not work for anything. To sit back, let somebody else take care of it. Let somebody else care enough to get out of bed at 4 a.m. and punch a clock or drive a truck or do something. Let somebody else. And that kind of thinking has crept into the church. We don't want to get our hands dirty anymore, but we want to be delivered from everything that Satan brings at us. And I'm going to tell you right now, your salvation Salvation is a lot deeper than what somebody's told you or you believe because Jesus died so you could fight in the kingdom of God so you would have something to come back against the devil with. And it's a shame. It's a shame. 
It's a shame. And, and, and let me just tell you this this morning. Because Jesus made sure when he was here, and even in Scripture after that, to convey to me and you, once you are saved, say this with me, once I am saved, once I am saved, that this is the way my mind is supposed to be concerning not heaven, because that's all we focus on. Okay, good, I'm not dying and going to hell. I can just go back out here and do all I want to do. I'm covered by grace. The Lord understands I'm not there yet. Listen, when you get saved, you are there, honey. The blood of Jesus washes everything away. I'm not talking about sanctification here, but there's a hunger and a desire to be like Jesus, and you don't want no part of yourself anymore. You don't want anymore. And you might drop the ball today, but you know what you do? You realize. You do like Peter did when Jesus said, hey, you're going to deny me three times. And you, you deny him three times. But you know what? This is where you know people are saved and they're not saved. Peter went out and wept bitterly. If you are not sorry and remorseful for offending the blood of Jesus, you have not been saved and you tell anybody that's breathing that I said that. If it doesn't grieve you when you dishonor Christ, you are not saved by the same blood of Calvary that I'm talking about today. You've got a form of godliness and you will not get to heaven until Jesus. Listen, the Lord, all this stuff was going on today, still going on as far as I know. And before before anybody got here this morning out of the blue, and I know I thought I knew what God was referring to. The Lord said, you want to be bold today. That automatically gets my attention, and then it scares the life out of me. What do you mean I'm going to have to be bold today, Lord? He says, you're going to have to be bold today. You think you know what you're saying, but you don't know what I'm going to say when you stand up there with that microphone. So we, we live in this world right here where... It's all watered down. It can be explained away. And Jesus saved me to put the mindset in me that the kingdom of God is how I think now. I'm saved, and this is how I'm supposed to think. That I see myself every day because daily you pick your cross up and follow me. And now I see myself daily picking it up. And I am a warrior Fighting in the kingdom of God. What does that look like? In order to carry this out, we have to discover what it is, how it is that we're going to inflict violence. I want you to imagine the kingdom of God, and I want you to imagine a mission field. The kingdom of God is where all of us are Right now, we're on the other side of the kingdom of God. We're doing our thing. We're going to church. We're reading the Bible. All this is scriptural. We're paying tithe. If you are living right, you are paying tithe, a tenth of your income. If you are living right and you love this Jesus, you are reading your Bible. You are praying. You are studying the scriptures. We're doing all these things. We're, we're, we're helping out. We're doing All these things, and it seems right. And we understand that this is just where we are. But when you, the moment you, Luke 16, 16, you start to press into the kingdom of God, that's like this this chasm, this middle world right here. So you got the kingdom of God, and, and then you got... What's on that side of the kingdom of God, which is me and you, we're like right here on the kingdom of God. And we make our mind up on the 3rd of March. As for me and my house, I'm going to start pressing through. And the devil will always resist you pressing into the kingdom of God. He'll tell you you're tired. He'll tell you it's no use, don't do that. He'll do all these things. He'll try to keep you from pressing in because guess what's inside the kingdom of God? Helmet of salvation. Miracles, signs, and wonders, the sword of the Spirit, the breastplate of righteousness, your loins covered, your feet 
shod with the all of those all of these things the mighty moves of God all of these dynamic things are inside the kingdom of God and every time you start to press because you know the word of God's telling you the truth he'll start resisting because the worst thing you can do is leave that side of the kingdom of God and come into press into the kingdom of God itself because when you do when you do, guess what you do? You are starting to inflict violence and pain. So no longer is he just afflicting your body. He's ripping through your family. He's, he's destroying things that you've, you've been praying about. He's working on things that, that, that you thought were going to come to fruition. You're inside now. And listen. He knows that the people that tap inside of the kingdom of God don't have to advertise that they're inside of the kingdom of God. They're inside the kingdom of God and they're walking in the spirit of God. And when you walk in the spirit of God, it's like I said Wednesday night. Peter, he was a poor excuse for a a, a follower before, before the spirit of God came and invaded his life. But after that experience and yielding, after that experience, guess what he did? He was a bold man, and they said just his, they put people in the street that just his shadow might follow him. But see, we spend our whole life trying to dodge and try to come around and work outside of the kingdom. We try to take a shortcut. We want to affect the mission field. We want to see our unbelieving spouse saved. We want to see our children come to know the Lord. We want to see God perform miracles in our midst. We want great things to be done. And so we just try to do it in our own flesh. And by the way, I said it uh, Wednesday night, and I'm going to say it again. It's already been said to the characters, but it's be said to the praise team. And some of you will hear it later on again, but I'm telling you right now. There are no shortcuts. Multitudes Church is maxed out right this minute based on performance and flesh. This is as far as people's talents and their, and their commitment can get us. This is it. This is it. You see what I mean? This is it. This is as far. And there's all that stuff in the middle. All of that stuff in the middle. And, and we, we kind of just leave it right there. You can't press in. Let me tell you these things real quick. You cannot press in to the kingdom of God while you're still pressing into yourself. I'm telling you folks, you've got to die. You've got to die to your desires, your opinions, way, the way you think I ought to do th- stuff at this church, the way you think God ought to do stuff from heaven. You've got to die to yourself. I really had all intentions to be through at 1145, and I just failed myself miserably. But I want you to hear this. You've got to die to yourself. Even as a Christian, and, and the, now people's going to get offended. What rolls off of my tongue right now is going to be misunderstood. You're going to go home. You probably will post and all this kind of spiritual stuff. You're going to do all this. You're going to kind of eat it for lunch, and you're going to spit me out, but I'm going to tell you anyway because the truth is the truth. When you become a Christian, you die, sir. You die, ma'am. There is nothing. That's, there's no more of your desires. Your desire is Jesus Christ and Him being glorified until you see Him with your own two eyes. And what kills me is people still as believers, they're always passionate about their heritage. or the, let, me, let me just say this about skin. There's no such thing as a white man when you are saved. There's no such thing as a black man or an African American once you are saved. There's no such thing as a Hispanic once you are saved. There's no such thing as a, a, American, a, a Native American or whatever. There's no such thing as I'm of British descent or, uh, or anything else because you cannot still be something that this world is labeled and still be a child of God in the kingdom. You can't be. I don't care. I know my family's got some what? A German or something. That's why I was tall like Stefan for so long. 
but that don't matter to me anymore because I'm not associated with, you're not proud, are, are you ashamed? Nope, don't have anything to do with what you're talking about. I'm proud and I am so proud of who I am in Christ Jesus because everything that had to do with that old man had death written all over it and damnation. So I'm not saying don't ever go to family reunions again or cancel your Ancestry.com account. I'm not saying that, but I'm telling you there are more people passionate and adamant about the color of their skin or where they came from or who their great-granddaddy was 20 times over than they are about being a child of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you are not ready to go to heaven if that's what your mind's on. You cannot press into this life, this way of thinking, the things of this world and press into the kingdom and you have to make that decision. You cannot serve two masters. That's always been associated with money, but there's more to it than money. You cannot serve two masters, meaning you and the culture and what's politically correct. You can't be a Republican, a Democrat, an Independent, or I just, I'm off the grid. I don't do anything. I just live off of oats. You can't do all that. Listen, you're either for Christ or you are against Him. You can't. You cannot love this life, church. You've got to detest it. That's why these men, they just sold what they had. They walked away from families and businesses and houses and comforts of this world. And they followed Jesus. And He will not take any less in this day that we're living in. Now I know why I said be bold. I want to tell you this. It's all about, we've heard this word about breaking through. I want to break through. Okay, I just need to break. There's breakthrough conferences. There's breakthrough books and all that. And you know what God's saying? You know what Jesus, the Holy Ghost is saying? Yeah, I would really love it if you would break through. I really wish you would break through. I wish you would press in. Because if you would break through, then I would break out. If you would break through, you would have a breakthrough. If you just break through, if you just press in, if you do this, we, we, we don't mind breaking through and pressing in when we need a money blessing. We will fast and pray. God, I'm trusting you for riches you said you would. Buy. And we want to like remind God that he's forgot about Malachi chapter 3 and all these other passages. Whatever you, your heart desires, whatever you ask on earth, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. Listen. Why are you not that froggy about pressing in to walk in a whole different realm that's going to do something about everything? But Jesus said, that's why you don't get what you ask for because you're always asking amiss. You don't care about anybody but yourself. You're asking me so you can spend it on you and and this life. That's why you don't have it. But you know what? People that break through and press in, They ask, and it's done. Peter and John walking up to the gate, beautiful, saw the man sitting there. He said, hey, give me some money. Peter said, we don't have any, but what we do have, we're going to give it to you. See, when you're in the kingdom, you don't have to say, well, we're going to pray for you now, but if, if it's God's will. We're just going to pray. If it's God's will now, you're going to be able to get up and walk. Do you you believe? So you can't show me that in the Bible, can you? It ain't in there. But he said this. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If you do this right here, if you walk in the kingdom, then you can do the same thing he did. After, after you've had that experience, this is what you can do. You can walk up. You don't have to hope God will do it. And see, that's the difference between a Christian on that side of the kingdom of God and somebody that's pressed through. They they don't. James said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways, church. And, And when you are on that side, you have to pray if it's God's will. You have to cross your fingers. It didn't work the last time. I'm about to make a fool at myself and all these kinds of things. But a person that's broken through, They're able to say, we don't have any money, but what we do have, we give it to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. And when you say that, you don't cross your fingers, hold your breath, 
look at your watch, look at heaven and hope God's going to do it because you know you are a child of the kingdom of God and no weapon formed against you. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. God will not allow his own to be embarrassed or put to shame, he said. His own, his own, his own. Why are you preaching like this? Because I'm getting you ready to fight before he steps out on that cloud riding that horse. That's what it's all about. It's not about coming to church. It's about fighting in this war that we see raging every day of our life. Hallelujah. God's so ready to do a move. He's so ready to do a work. And in closing... We need to be careful because the Bible tells us, do not. Paul said it in 1 Thessalonians 5, I believe, for us not to quench the spirit. You know what we've, hey, I would if there was time, I'd tell you, tell me, tell me, tell me what we talk. All of you raised in Pentecostal type churches, faith, charismatic church, I tell me what that means. And you say, oh, we're talking about during the church service, you know, if God's telling you to run or shout or speak in tongues or, or go pray for somebody or respond, you better do it. Well, you know, let's talk about it for a minute. The Spirit's always moving. Spirit of God's always, it ain't at a 90 mile an hour song at an altar call. Spirit's always moving. When you're in line at Walmart, when you are in line at the bank, when you are in a lobby waiting room waiting on the nurse to call you back, the Spirit of God is moving. And the people in the kingdom of God have dynamic spiritual antennas. And the Spirit is always urging and pushing the people in the kingdom. And the people in the kingdom know that that's going on. So everywhere they go, the people in the kingdom of God Everywhere they go, doctor's office, it don't matter, getting their oil changed, those antennas are always up. And they know that when they, not when somebody asks them for prayer, but when they see a need and the Spirit of God has laid it on their heart, they go to them, they know that if I don't do this, I am quenching the Spirit of God because I'm familiar with that spirit because I am in the kingdom of God. See, people in the kingdom of God do not quench the spirit. They don't. They don't quench it. I want to pray because I've had a, whoo, I've had a time. Just a minute. I'm going to spend a minute in prayer and I'm going to tell you. I'm spending a minute praying. And then after this, you're going to see a song before you go home that tells you, and today it's going to show you how to fight your battle. Do you realize? I'm going way out here right now because a lot of people are going to twist this if you're not careful. If you're carnal minded, you'll twist it. If you're spiritually minded, you won't. When you are walking and you've pressed into the kingdom of God, you don't have to go around asking for prayer. Because the power of God is in you working through you. Show me how many times the apostles prayed for one another. Show me. I can show you one time where Peter's mom-in-law was sick. They went and prayed for her. She was prayed for. But see, when you, after the day of Pentecost, you all about the kingdom. You all about warfare. You are all about inflicting. You're taking it. You don't care if somebody's missing a leg and they need one to grow back. You don't care if they got a headache. You, you, you don't care if they just don't feel good. You don't care if they got stage four cancer and they're at Morrison Manor. You don't care because you're in the kingdom and everything in this world is subject to the kingdom of God and the authority that's in that kingdom. Father God, as we search our hearts, Lord, we're not thinking, we're not processing this message today. 
But we're searching our hearts right now, God. God, you want to do a great work. And you are. It may be in Africa. Like it was this week when they made a stand, Lord, last weekend. God, you want to, you want to do a work. And somebody somewhere is going to press in. It might be in Africa. But it, it, it can be in the United States because you're not respect of persons. Lord, we're not hungry anymore. We don't want to press. We want to just go around. We, Lord, and we need, we need to, a change of mind. We need our mind to be renewed, Lord. I need mine renewed. I've got to get my mind off of this world, these things. This is not what it's about. So, God, I pray for every person here that's not, that's not a believer. If you're not a believer, you can walk to this altar right now, and I'll pray with you. I'll introduce you to Jesus Christ, and your life will never be the same if you follow Him. And all you have to do this may be played if it's recorded on a tape later. And I want you to know what to do. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I am, I am wrong. I'm a transgressor. I'm a sinner. I need for you to save me. I've been following my flesh, my head. My head's in the way of my heart. I have to debate or rationalize everything. I have to kind of see how it lines up with what I believe or what I feel. I just can't follow you. Too many questions. But today, Lord, that's coming down. And I'm giving you my heart. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God sent to pay for the sins of man. Be my Lord and Savior. If you do that, the Lord will save you. God, help us to focus right now and think of where we are as you reveal this to us in song in the name of Jesus.